Hello, everybody. Welcome back to You've Been Josh with Josh. I am your host, Josh. Yes, we are back for episode 32. Woo! 30 flirty and thriving, as we keep saying. <laughs> keep saying. Um, I hope everyone had a great freaking week. Um, I'm really happy to be back. Uh, thankfully, my ear is completely healed now. No problems. I thought my other side of my head, my other ear, was going to actually like start to get an infection well. It felt like it, but... Thankfully, that was not the case. Um, however, uh, our good old Pupperoni Bandit um, seems to be sick right now. He's been having some uh, digestive problems, but he seems to be doing all right. He just needs to uh, go out a little bit more <laughs> during the day to do his business. You know, his little his little biznaroonies. Um, but guys, I don't know if you saw. You probably did because you clicked on the, the podcast. But uh, today we have a very, very special guest. Um, Side of chips. How you doing? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, to anyone who doesn't know, um, Side of Chips was the first person that I found on Twitch that I started watching. Um, and I will continuously say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember actually I was thinking about this before we got on the call because I was like, oh yeah, like I wonder, I wonder yeah. what how everything happened. Um, I remember specifically what part of Miles Morales you were at when I joined. And it was really? when, yeah, it was when uh, you were with uh, Miles's friend and you were going to go infiltrate their place. And so you were walking across the crane and then had to jump. Um, do you remember that? My friend. The the girl. Like the main girl? The... Yeah, the main the main girl, which yeah. is kind of like, yeah. And then they're they're going to the underground. And so they're taking you up the building after the you meet for coffee and you have to walk across oh, the yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember that was specific because I hadn't gotten to that part in the game yet. And I was just like, oh, this is really interesting. But uh I remember I was like, Oh, I, I wanna I realized I didn't watch it on Twitch and I was like, I'm streaming, I should probably watch some other people just to, you know, gain some insight on what other people do because I hadn't watched Twitch before. And uh, so you had start you had you started at that point? Yes, yes, but you yes. hadn't watched anybody. I hadn't watched anybody. I was always a YouTube Amazing. person. Yeah, I, I was always you, a YouTube person. So, so you, you just then, but from YouTube, you were like, I'm gonna, you know, what? I'm gonna do Twitch. Yeah, basically. Oh wow! Because <laughs> I I would always Amazing. seen like uh, I've always seen like people with the compilations, especially like Ludwig yes. and like all of yep. them. Like yep, yep, you yep, see yep. their clips and stuff, and like compilations of like Twitch fails. So I knew what it was, but I didn't know entirely how it ran. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so from there, I was like, oh, that always looked really fun. And I knew that YouTube kind of was doing it, but like it wasn't really like it wasn't really stable yet. And so I was like, oh, I'll just try Twitch. And so I looked up like tutorials on OBS and like and I remember when I first started, it wasn't that great. But then I was learning as I went. But after like a, I think it was like a couple weeks in, I was just like, "Wow, I should probably like watch people so I can get like an understanding." Plus, it'd be <laughs> nice to meet some new people. And I was like, well, "How do I?" <laughs> I remember too. I never used the the search I was thing. Chosen person. Yeah, and I I remember I had never used like the search feature before, so I was like what? looking through, and I was like, "Oh, so this is viewers." So I flipped the viewers, and I was going through some of the, the like the the lower count because, of course, when I switched, it, Miles Morales just came out, so like, yeah, there's people with thousands, and I was like, "Oh, that's gonna be like a whole different experience." I want to find people who are like streaming and, and just enjoying, it, and I could probably talk to them. And uh, I remember I saw you were playing it, and I liked your your name because I was like, "Oh, side of chips." I've been yeah, at the Apple, a, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I clicked, and I you know like. Food. Fair is fair. There it is. <laughs> but, nice. Yeah. I remember JD was there. I remember that. And I think Diana oh, okay, was so there I as well. Okay. So I was... Was JD mod, do you remember, at that point? I believe so. Okay. So I was like a few months in then. Um, yeah. Because you started in August? Yeah. So I f believe my first stream was the 23rd of August. 2020. Oh my god. Yeah, 2020. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> and I was I was playing Animal Crossing. I started with Animal Crossing at the time. Mm -hmm. Um because I wanted to start with something that was pleasant, not too stressful. 
because um, my the what drew me to the similar compilations that you were talking about and uh you through youtube and stuff is the fact i was playing overwatch uh, on console i wasn't playing it properly but um mm. but i would watch all these compilation videos of all these twitch streamers playing it uh i like fitzy here um mushu and uh hollywell which are two like kind of uh well british based creators um who else did i watch uh six i got called six because they all played characters that i like to play yeah and and i would see like oh what's this like what's this what's this twitch thing oh what is it <laughs> um and a, a original kind of impetus behind it is because i would quite like to play overwatch properly like com- competition and be a stream for it because i love watching it so why should i not like take part of it as well yeah but the through watching Twitch and kind of engaging with a little bit of the community and through shit I got by playing on consoles, like the community isn't the nicest really. So maybe, maybe I don't want to start streaming <laughs> that game and I still haven't even ever really played it on stream. But, um, <laughs> so I figured like, uh, uh, Animal Crossing had just come out. It was the pandemic. Uh, yeah. that seems like a lovely game, lovely, uh, community. And it proved to be exactly right. And, um, Within two weeks, I got raided by uh, Mori Kitsune, who is still yeah. a wonderful, huge uh, um, Animal Crossing streamer now, and um, and a girl called Isa, who is actually on a break for streaming at the moment. But um, through them, they brought JD, Al, um, uh, Jedi and Casey, um, Sarah as well, who are mm-hmm. all like solid and consistent people, like always. and. Um, and I think Diana just found me randomly. Yeah. Quite similar to you. Yeah. Um, Diana Games, who we're talking about. Yeah. Um, what is it? Uh, it's it's actually kind of funny. Um, recently, I reconnected with a childhood friend who's been coming to my streams now. Oh. Um, who used to do like theater with me back in like middle school. Amazing. Um, yeah, it was just super random. But <laughs> even smaller world, I have come to find out that she's been watching Diana Games for the last year and a half. Oh, and didn't know the connection. Did well, you didn't know that I, she didn't know I streamed. She didn't know that, like you know, she just wanted to watch Animal Crossing and found Diana and has been oh, watching her. Is what? that crazy? That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that so weird? Like no connection. Like you know, never oh, heard, like. I and that. I, I started asking like, oh, do you know Chips? Do you know Becca? And they're like, no, I've never. I just hung out in Diana's. I was just looking for my like Animal Crossing, and I was like, wow, this is so weird. <laughs> say, Diana is absolutely. Oh, popping. she's wonderful. Uh, it's yeah so wonderful so great to watch i feel so blessed i get like her and like maury come actually coming to watch me as well it's kind of wonderful um mm-hmm. considering how you know great they're doing on the platform yeah they're killing it they're killing it yeah same with becca it's really awesome to see her grow you know yeah becca's just carving out this wonderful section of twitch that is very much them and it's their own and it belongs to them and it's just yeah it's all yeah it just it's just all becca and i kind of love it um and it's exciting to see yeah i'm very um i'm very happy for them they're doing really good they were uh they were on uh last week uh on oh, podcast wow. and it was really yeah. cool to just talk about life and <laughs> streaming and everything um but yeah no i was i was really happy because i remember um i found you and um, I, then I found, I think, Alexander Average not that long after. Um, and, of course, through both of you, I've, I met, like, everybody, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it just kind of blossoms. Something that I have noticed, though, with, with Twitch is, you know how like we're always like, oh, it's a small world. But then we look at the brand, like, the grand scheme of things. And, like, there's so many other, like, pockets of, like, small world groups out there that, like, everyone's kind of connected because when you when you have someone on the recommended it's normally someone that either your viewer watches or your other streamer friends watch or know and it's kind of like friend of a friend situation like there's always some sort of connection with how the algorithm goes yeah i'm interested to know if it is based off that first initial initial search like i had you know because like when I searched, I had everybody and that was the first person that I was actually going to follow and watch. And I chose you. And from there branched. 
you know oh okay so you're saying the fact that you interacted with me then would then lead you yeah because the then all stuff. the other recommended people are going to be people that you know and i know and you know it kind of goes from there yeah because every okay, single so time went... oh sorry carry on no you carry on oh well, all i was going to say was every single time that i find someone on recommended they normally have suggested or have people in their chat that i know either viewers or streamers okay yeah, um, it must work like that then. yeah and so i it's it's interesting to me because it's like it's up in the air on like it, no matter who you choose the first person that's going to be where the algorithm is going to take you know and it can just keep getting bigger but then once you chose that one person that group that they know that's going to be like the starting bud of this tree you know that's mm. just going to go it's just interesting you know because like you think of like i found groups on on twitter that are like in a different realm of group of people and like i've just started watching them on twitch and now i'm getting recommended for people i've never even heard of oh, wow. and so it's okay, wonder yeah. it's it's I, I don't know if it's because twitch is set up that way but it just seems that way because every single time i meet someone i'm like oh my gosh i i see someone in your chat that i know or like you know like or or you watch this person too that's crazy and um but then there's i just know there's so many other groups out there that i've lots I've of seen pockets. you know yeah yeah I mean, there's a whole, there's a, there's this whole world of British tick, uh, TikTok, uh, uh, British uh, Twitch content creators mm -hmm. uh, who I just have no knowledge of, really. Um, there are people like we know who we know, uh, Charisse, who uh, often like we get to see in my stream sometimes, and who I watch as well, and. Um, I'll see her kind of uh, social media content. She's going to events and doing all these things. And with all these other like uh, content creators that I have no <laughs> idea who they are. And I, it's kind of made me think like, oh my God, maybe I should actually go to, you know, think about these events and try and like, I don't know, just meet more other yeah. and broaden my bubble, so to speak, of people, you know, who live in the same place as me. <laughs> like I mean, I live in London. I'm sure there is like quite a few of them, yeah, and like around and stuff. Um, but it is, yeah. I guess it's. I mean, how often are you clicking recommended? Because oh, that's pretty not often that, actually. Are you? Because that's I, not something I really. Yeah, I like doing it because normally, well, it's the same vein. Like it's, I, I. There's specific people that I watch frequently, but yeah. now that I'm in a, especially now, now that I'm in a different time slot. I can watch other people that I normally don't get to watch. Oh, and so crazy. there's, yeah. So there's like a lot of people that I get to see now and recommended that I normally don't see. So I click on them. I watch them. Um, I, there's like a, a probably eight people that I like keep my eye out for if they're live. And then there's people that I just like stop in and check out, you know, um, because the follow list becomes so long and I don't want to, you oh know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I try to I try to keep it, you know, if I really enjoy the, the, the content, like I'll follow. But I'd normally like to lurk. I like to lurk and just watch for a while and see, you know, especially just if you're checking out a game, you know, um, yeah. and chat casually. But yeah, yeah it's I'm interesting. A serial, serial lurker because most of my Twitch Same. <laughs> um, consumption is happening whilst I'm working. At exactly. Home. So a lot of it is something I can I mainly just have to hear uh and so that's why i watch kind of a lot of overwatch because i most of the time i can just kind of hear it and i know what's going on or if i'm watching someone play elden ring um kind of one of the main primary kind of uh chats i interact with is mushu who was an overwatch streamer but now um she is a uh variety and she's been playing Elden Ring recently and so I find myself like the question will be asked or uh, something I know information about will be mentioned and then I can't not turn and type yeah. something like oh blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, like even though I should be working but I just feel like my ears will be like oh oh I can <laughs> I can take part of this conversation um yeah. but other than that yeah I, sometimes I'll just have multiple people up on my screen and I'm just like dipping in and out of like you know you don't really pay attention but then you hear something like, oh wait i can i can yeah. engage with that but, um. i i can have i try to have as many tabs open for people as i can but obviously some if there's too many like you got to mute some of oh. them oh like yeah. mute in the yeah, tab yeah, yeah. but there i can normally handle like two going on at once with the sound on 
um, before like my brain can't handle it. <laughs> just play with um, the volume levels. Though, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just yeah. mess with that. Um, but like you're saying, I because I try to get stuff done, and I'm I've been working hard on becoming more. Um, it, it's hard because when you're working for yourself, like it's it, at least I, I had to learn over this past like six eight months, like keeping myself motivated when like i'm just like i need to take a break um i've come to find that with the morning streams it's a lot easier to stay on top of my shit as soon as i get off stream going and doing work right away like yeah grab a bowl yeah. of food like normally i've been making salads which have been great because it's not heavy and it doesn't make me fall asleep you know like i'll have a bowl of, like a salad and then i'll just continue like don't get up from my computer just like sit and i'll pull up people and lurk while i'm working on stuff and it just works a lot better because before I was like, the only time I get motivated is like 8 p.m. And then I stay up until like four. And oh my God, it was yeah. like so annoying. But now since I'm getting up at five, by the time my stream is over, I'm fully awake and like in the zone. And so I'll just go. And what time uh, are you sleeping to go up at five? Um, Joy and I normally go to bed around 1030 to 11. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So I, I get to, I miss out on a couple of people's streams that I used to watch, but ultimately it's better <laughs> so um we'll have what's kind of the viewer loss been like has, has it been much of the people surprisingly because the people that were there obviously could only make the evening yeah. and whatnot. um surprisingly my viewership has gone up hey um but it's also because i've met a lot of new people um and i also think a lot of people surprisingly watch while they're at work Yes, um, that's what I thought might be yeah. happening. Yeah, and so it's yeah. kind of like they can have me up in the background. Um, I have a lot of lurkers, which I love because I mean, like you know, everything helps. But also, I'm the same way, so like it's cool because I know that they're just doing their shit, and I have me on in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the biggest thing that was a worry for me. And like, I, I, I we talked about this before, but um, mm -hmm. Joy with Joy's new job, it's just we would have been complete op opposite schedules. We wouldn't be able to see each other at all. Um, if I continue doing nights, so um, it's worked out, and it's actually worked out for the better. I know there's a lot of people who can't watch anymore because of the fact that time is different, but um, you know, it's There's always the vods. Yeah, it is. It is how it is. Like things change and stuff. Like I, I feel bad, but at the same time, I have to do what's best for me. Um, yeah, and it's but, helped. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Amazing. Um, but what is it when when you were saying with uh, you watch like Overwatch and stuff or like normally what you watch when you lurk, right? Yeah. For me, I've come to find that I watch a lot of art streams because I can look over every once in a while yes. and see the progress, yeah. you know, but it's not like something that I need to be paying attention to. And normally the conversation is very like one sided where they'll be talking about what they're doing so I can hear like what's going on. You know, it's nice. Um, yeah, JD just, um, showed me the beauty of the art streams. Um, yeah, I found a lot of really lovely pixel art people. Oh, um, ooh. One uh, uh, girl I really love to watch who actually did some of my emotes. Um, Woods Pixel. Uh, Woods, W-O-O-D-S, Pixel, but P-I-X-L. Um, yeah, so. yeah she, she is awesome and really enjoyable to watch she just um did a recent thing where she uh did pixel art for all 151 original pokemon from memory and oh it was, my god yeah, it was really great and wow. a few little che cheeky whoopers put in here and there um <laughs> yeah really great really good stuff that's awesome i like the pixel art is pretty interesting i never normally the stuff that i i i've been watching just because it pops up more frequently is like uh fantasy related artwork and then uh video game graphic like uh, like digital art that um yeah that people do just like off of video games or like ideas that they have um also uh, i don't know if you know snazby no um no friend of like uh crimson and that whole side like the coy ghost and stuff um, yeah. They do uh, oil paint and uh, oh, watercolor wow. and stuff, and um, I normally get to have her on while she's she's streaming because she normally starts right before I get off. Um, People are so so talented in that. So category. talented, it's, it's so crazy. crazy. So, yeah. I I I don't have 
like obviously we all have our own skills you know yeah but there's something about art that is just it's it, you know like <laughs> you see someone who could do art you're like man i really wish that i could do something like that yeah <laughs> and, you, and you know the answer is like you know it's practice it's oh yeah as you keep doing we know we know but it's like yeah but i don't have a good base to start on to practice with <laughs> yeah no i yeah i agree <laughs> I, yeah i don't know i, I guess but if, you know um if you really want it you know if i really really wanted to do it then i guess i would practice it but um, it's it's the same as no. like oh yeah i could i could sit down and learn a language but yeah I, well, the you, amount of times it, yeah. i've tried to sit and learn after effects and i just never do um <laughs> yeah it's hard <laughs> it's hard also speaking of after effects i loved your uh new brb little thing that you put up when you have to go to the my, of the bathroom my p bar yeah with the p bar i love that that's See, great i love after effects for stupid little shit like that that i can just that's what kind of excites me uh it, when it comes to creating stuff for twitch is that i do get to make fun silly things yeah. like a p bar so for anyone who don't, doesn't know is that i have a, a a bar that i you know activate when i'm going to the bathroom and it's set to two minutes and it's just a yellow liquid that slowly this you know uh goes down in the pee bar basically a rip off of um scott pilgrim <laughs> but it's not so it's not pixelated it's a little bit more liquidy yeah. uh, <laughs> uh yeah uh let's see that that's fun that that's that's fun but um you know that that's uh following tutorials and stuff like that rather yeah. than like making it fresh from scratch did you i know you have a lot of like editing background but when you started twitch yeah. was like youtube your your oyster or did you know people who who helped you through the whole setting up obs and like how to do your stream stuff and oh so yeah i mean in terms of obs settings and just getting to grips with the program or youtube mm -hmm. uh tutorials um who's that guy that also makes the music um, oh alpha gaming <laughs> Alpha Gaming, a lot of his videos, <laughs> good dude. Like the fact he gives all that music away for free and stuff yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of his videos, a um, few other random people, some Elgato videos, because I knew, I don't know how I learned what you kind of needed to do, but I guess it was just from watching other streamers and picking up little bits of information here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, I knew Elgato was the thing to go to for your capture card, blah, 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 blah. Um, and but i was also fortunate enough that because i am a video editor and it is my full-time job and it's i have a i run as a limited company so me as a freelance video editor it's my company as well so yeah i was able to change what my business was which was not solely just editing video content now it would be creating it um on top of editing it so the microphone, the webcam, and all, well, these were also needed for the fact that, um, you know, I'll be working from home because of uh, the pandemic and lockdown, and I'll be having lots of meetings and all of that jazz. And um, so I was able to get a webcam, microphone. Um, I guess that was the main initial things that I kind of needed. Oh, a light. They were like a business expense and other lights I've got, green screen that I've got that I don't ever use anymore, tripods. Uh, Do you have like a box of like, just stuff? I have this giant <laughs> bag. Like, I was going to say, I have, like I have a tote. my height. Yeah, that's like half of my height. That is just full of light stands, bulbs, yeah. green screens, black screens, white like and uh, reflectors and all of these things that... Um, I like I'll use when um if I'm making little side video well you know some little side little videos I've done for like uh, Christmas and all of that stuff but um, yeah yeah not not so much anymore yeah like green screen's just not good enough I want a better one um you know again I want that Elgato one that you kind of pull up the ground because it's a really nice material that's kind of easier to key out for visuals um, yeah mine, mine's are like quite a floppy piece of fabric so. If there's like even a touch of a shadow, then it won't work so well and all of that stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was also, because of my background in editing and because I also used to be, I used to work for a production company as a camera person as well. And I've done some directing and some producing and stuff. So I just had overall a knowledge of production, video, lighting, 
um, post-production in terms of file formats, audio formats, editing audio, editing video, and all of that stuff, which was all very, very transferable to streaming. I yeah. just had all of this base knowledge that was kind of necessary. And I kind of hats off to people like yourself and other streamers I know who have had to learn all of this on the fly, because when you're getting talked to about encoding and file types and all of this stuff, that just seems so foreign in terms of information. And you, you know, you're having to do it whilst trying to be an entertainer is very, very, very difficult thing. Yeah. I, but I what, what I was about to say with, uh, on the lines of that, like I would have started streaming probably at the beginning of summer of 2020. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I started in October because I, I'm such a perfectionist that I waited like <laughs> eight months of just like Googling YouTube videos, making sure everything looked good, messing around in Canva, making sure my overlays that I wanted to do, which at the time, looking back, I'm like, oh my God, they're so fucking bad. You know, <laughs> I want to like, change mine so bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, just, I just don't have an idea of what yeah. I want them to look like yeah. right now. So it's like, oh, and, and sometimes, sometimes you're like, ooh, I want to change this. And then you never do, or you look at it, you yep. change it. And then you're like, man, <laughs> there was no need to change it. Why did I change it? Yeah, it's just that constant back and forth. That's it. Took me so long to finally go live because one, I was nervous, but at the same time, I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And like, yeah. I didn't know what encoding was until uh, I want to say like right after I started going full time, like after like six or so months after I started, because I yeah, I, so, uh, yeah, the, the, I just didn't not surprised. Yeah, I just followed a, a thing online of like this is for your PC st like stuff. This is the best output for OBS settings. So I just copied what that person had. And then it was only like this past summer when I really looked into optimizing OBS and like now my OBS runs real well, like so much better. Yeah, you I'm know? even because when I first started, because I, I stream and record at the same time, um, which I'm doing a little bit less of now because I just had, I recently cleared like two and a half terabytes worth of footage. I just was doing nothing with. Oh my God. <laughs> so I've just kind of decided to take a little step back with trying to like make clips and all of these things for now, just until I, you know, I'm fully want to do them again, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Um, but in the early days, because I was like quite actively using my video editing knowledge i was setting my recordings to such a high fidelity it was so unnecessary like i was essentially <laughs> i downloaded this uh thing what would you call it like a patch um that i would that would allow me to take turn my recordings into this apple pro res 422 format which okay so that is a kind of format that i would use on for professional clients of mine that you know we're talking like high-end fashion or beauty shoots yeah. all of these things that are just it's like megabytes and megabytes per second really high like fidelity stuff and my my like a single stream was like coming out at like 400 500 gig a pop oh my god and yes it's absolutely ridiculous and i did that for like the first few months because my like in oh my, my head i was like <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, in my head, I was like, yeah, but I want to like, I want my base. I want my base footage to be the best it can be. Yeah. And then I'll put it in YouTube and then I'll put it in Premiere and I'll edit it and then I can make it worthy of uh, YouTube and stuff. That's fair. But it's so unnecessary. So unnecessary. Yeah. Like now, now I think I uh, mine, I still export as MOVs, but they're not pr uh, ProRes. They are h264s uh which is the same codec as youtube and stuff and any yeah. like internet video uh but i think they they are i think i record at like 20 meg per second which even that isn't unless is necessary really but i just yeah. want it a little bit more just in yeah. case why not <laughs> um and now each stream comes out at like 40 50 gig <laughs> and so my my you know internal <laughs> ssds like thank me and i yeah. have to i don't have to empty them as often now yeah, I try to um, I try to do a deep clean of like stuff that's on my PC and I upload it to like the cloud. So that yeah. way, I, just in case, you know, because you never know. Um, but just to give everyone who's listening who isn't um, oh, yeah, in right. the tech God. field, 
I, I just I just thought of that when we were talking about it. I was like, oh crap, yeah, like we're talking about <laughs> this and like I, I feel I can only I can only imagine someone yeah. sitting there listening and being like, this sounds really cool. I just I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um so OBS, which is what we've been talking about, um, is uh the streaming platform that we use to upload our content whenever we're doing. Like it's a it's a platform, it's free. So you it's can set it's platform. like the streaming platform. So you can take all of your stuff. Um, you can have scenes with all your alerts and stuff, all these widgets, and you can kind of go crazy with it. You can literally do whatever you want. It's kind of like your own canvas. Um, and then whatever you, when you start broadcasting from the, the uh, application, it uploads to Twitch. So you have to connect your Twitch account to the OBS and you can do that. Now there's another one called Streamlabs, which you can do um, the same exact thing, but it's just like, it's like the Apple to the Android of <laughs> of streaming platforms. Plus, they use the same hardware as the OBS, which is the free one. Um, it's the same thing, basically. But when you broadcast your, your stream, you go live, you can also record at the same time. So that way, when you're done streaming, um, the entire content that you did, the entire VOD is saved um, to your computer. So that way, you can use it for whatever you want. Um, would you like to explain encoding, Chips? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll try. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so weird. So you have like a file type, right? Yeah, your .mp4, .mov, .jpeg, .blur. Mm -hmm. But um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of video, you have these encodes within that them as well. So... Um, So a H.264 is, God, I, I wouldn't be able to give you the science of it, but... <laughs> oh, no, that, that's fine. Just yeah, the basis. So that way yeah, people so just like, like, you know... It, they're like compressors, essentially. So H.264 is like a compressed like format, but whilst also trying to keep kind of pixel fidelity. So mm. it will kind of crush the data rate per second. But, you know, somehow it keeps things looking nice, even though some YouTube videos look dog shit. Yeah. Um, it's just so, so that a, way, because there's so much uh, content going through constantly. Yeah. It's just to save... It's, you know people's phones people's internet people's bandwidth yeah. can only process so many megabytes per or you know megabytes kilobytes per second and stuff so this is just a way of making it more easily consumable by people and and basically in my industry faster uploads um uh because time is so key um but then you know you have your much higher versions like i said earlier hate your apple pro res and or your dnx hd or uh there are so many kinds you could even just have like an uncompressed like jpeg video uh, uh, image sequence that might be used by vfx people and stuff like that um and so there's a program I use called Adobe <laughs> Encoder, which, you know, it will take this big, beautiful video that I made it in Premiere and make it export it right down to a little bit more of an easily watched uh, version, essentially. Yeah. And then yes. they have then they have stream encoding, which they it's the same, basically the same principle. Yeah. But then because you can set in OBS the, the, the application on what you want to output like quality wise. So yeah. to anyone who doesn't understand, like, you know how you can go on YouTube and you can click the resolution and you can change like, oh, I want to watch this in like 1080p, which is like HD or uh, like uh, 1440p, which is like, you know, HD plus, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then like you can watch it in like 720, which is still, that's still HD, isn't it? 720? Uh, no. It's well just below. Yeah, it's yeah. SD, I guess. And so, but. depending on like how your internet is, you might want to bring down the resolution so that way it's you know it's easier for mm. you to watch and it'll be less, little less quality, but it'll be quicker and it won't buffer as much. That's yeah, the same Twitch thing. Is, yeah, Twitch's server is only really uh, for at least um, affiliates, as far as I'm aware. They yeah. process vid video at six thousand kilobytes per second. Yeah, so it's not really like worth us setting our stuff any higher than that. Exactly. Yeah. Until you partner, and then you can do like 4K. I think it's like <laughs> only eight to ten, so it's not a huge jump. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like, huge. Yeah, but at least then you could do 1080p uh, better if you more like wanted to. Yeah. And actually, what's good about partner is that um, uh, you people who are watching you get option. You know that little cogwheel option that you were talking about mm. to um, change know, that. Lower, yeah, lower the resolution yeah. and such. It's interesting because I found out. Um, I think back in December uh, that it's your it's an algorithm 
And every single time you go live, you have a chance of possibly getting that kind of encoding where oh, you can do that. Happens? Yeah. Um, oh, wow. But it's random for affiliates. Yeah. And then partners get it every single time. I um, guess it's just a case if their servers have the current capacity to process yeah. yours as well as they are everyone else's at the same time. Kind of exactly. Thing. Yeah. It's interesting. That's, that's a lot of live encoding. The amount of thousands of... Oh, yeah. You think about it. Same with like YouTube. You're like, holy crap. Twitch servers. Yeah. They're all like actively making four versions of this one stream that someone's pumping out and saving the VOD at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, you can understand like the costs that Twitch actually have to endure their overheads. So, uh, here's a topic of conversation that I wanted to touch with you because I feel like... Um, we could yeah. we could touch on a few uh, discuss Benny. on it for a little while you know um yeah. twitch payouts as well as twitch um uh cuts for affiliates yeah and such um it's been very pre i mean it's been prevalent for a while but yeah. as of late i think i've seen just so much on like that 50% cut and it's a lot ridiculous. of people it's complaining like, yeah. and stuff like it's just it's been a lot. So what what's your thoughts on it? I want to discuss a little bit with you and and, yeah. and just have some open conversation. I I understand like I'm just saying I understand Twitch's cost, but I think 50/50 is kind of crazy. Yeah. I don't I don't think it needs to be so much, especially what was kind of I guess, you know, I I mean, I'm fortunate that I I I have a side job and this isn't my main source of income. Um um, but obviously when they localize the costs of everybody, yeah. great, wonderful idea. Very glad they did that because it a lot of many, many countries kind of benefited. But what happened then for like the pound is a sub then became three pound 99. We'll call it four pound. So I get two pound of that. So, you know, if one person subscribes to me, that means I get two pound a month for putting in Say if I stream my regular three times a week, four to five hours, 15 hours, uh, and then times that by four, <laughs> 15, yeah. 30, 45, 60, 60 hours a month, I get four pounds for two pounds for that. Um, so that, you know, when you think of it like that, that kind of seems crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of fortunate again with the people I have that I, I don't know how many subs I have. I never look at those numbers, but I guess a recent payout of mine I got was like 150. And that's kind of the most I've got in a while because I haven't really been very, very consistent with my stream of late. Um, so that was quite nice <laughs> to get that. But that was a mix of bits and gifted subs and stuff. Yeah. So um, I, I think, I mean, with the amount of affiliates and, and partners, I don't see how they wouldn't be able to have do like a 60, 40 or a 70, 30. Yeah. Because if I had an agent, if an age, if a video edit agent of mine came to, you know, they take, well, I actually, I'm lucky. I don't have agents that take money from me. They charge the client that they book for me kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. But some people take it off of you and it's never more than 10 to 15%. Um, and if someone came to me and was like, yeah, you're, you're going to work for us. We're going to, we'll handle, we'll store your footage. We w won't promote you in any way. You will do all the work, but you'll just be using our platform. And, you know, we'll take 50% of the money. I will tell them to absolutely fuck off. I will never work for you. Yeah. But Twitch, we, we do it. And I don't. I honestly don't think it's going to change because I see. You know, I've said it on Twitter. I see loads of people always bringing it up on Twitter because it is a crazy amount. Um, but I don't think it's going to change. I don't think Twitter yeah. are ever going to tweak it. Like, I don't think they even change it for partners, do they? I mean, for, like for partners, you can something. discuss, but it, I don't think it's right yeah. away. I think that I've, I, what if, from what I've heard from the people who are partner, you can discuss with them and like negotiate for better. But yeah. it doesn't happen. So well, sometimes probably, it doesn't happen right away. There'll probably be stipulations where you have to be doing certain hours. You need to yeah. be pulling a certain amount Depends of people. Depends on the sub you have, yeah. Um, I would never going to work under those kind of like restrictions and stuff. It would just be like, oh, just let me do it. <laughs> How I <laughs> well, and, do and that's it. the thing. I, I'm, I'm pretty laid back about it. Um, I think mm. everything you said is 100% valid. I think that... 100% it should be a bigger split because it's, it, you put it perfectly with if if you're working in the entertainment industry and you have a manager 
the manager normally takes uh, a small percentage, you know, because yeah. they're also working for you. It's the most yeah. beneficial relationship out of any other kind of partnership, you know, because the more jobs they get you, the more money they make. They make. Yeah. It, it's beneficial. You know, it's the, you know, like with other things, it's like, we want you because we can make money off of you um, because of this X, Y, Z or blah, blah, blah. This is like, they're going to do work for you. So that way they can make money, but you can also make money, but you're the person who's going to be doing the content that brings in the money. You just, they just help you find things they promote for you and stuff. So if you think about it that way, it's, it, which is a perfect example. Um, Twitch should be getting a smaller cut because all that they're doing is providing the space and the servers and the VOD, you know, like that, which is a lot. Yeah. And I can imagine, well, yeah, but like a lot. with, yeah. with what they've amassed thus far, and what they've built, they can bring it back and still be making more. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think they're... What, um, sorry? I just just to know what their profit margins are, Twitch. Yeah, I've, something that I've heard a lot of is people saying that they're losing money, but I don't think that's the case. I also no. think people are not as business savvy as they'd like to think they are. <laughs> and they'll blaze their opinions, but not actually do any research when it comes to it. Um, I don't know what their margins are, but I know like, especially because Amazon is the owner. They're the father company. Like yeah. they're always going to be around. <laughs> like, I don't think anytime soon, or if they want to try something, they have the availability to do that. But like you're saying, I don't expect it to change. Um, I just expect them to do more for us in this, in regards to things that you're able to do on the platform. Um, that, that ad incentive they were talking about recently, I thought that was quite a good idea. Yeah, um, so for me personally, especially because we already have to deal with ads, I have yeah. my ads set up where um, I, instead of pre-roll ads that will happen every single time someone refreshes or joins my stream if they're not a sub, um, I have three minutes of ads play every starting half an hour in every hour uh, for three minutes. It's just three minutes of ads every hour and then an ad free yeah. hour of viewing, which is perfect. It's like Pandora. You listen to like 30 seconds, you get an hour or whatever. Um, it's like that. Um, so that way, if someone comes in with a raid, they're not hit with ads right away. And I like that. So that way, because everyone hates ads, you know, and it mm -hmm. is. And, and now I know when they're going to show up so I can tell people I can prep them. I can be like, hey, guys, we're almost at that 30 minute mark. If you're not a sub. Uh, I, I apologize. You're going to have some ads real quick, you know, Um but I already have that set up. So if they added this functionality, like they were talking about with the ad incentives, that would just add extra guaranteed cash in my pocket for something that's already implemented on their thing. And people know, you know, because it is like you three minutes of ads every hour, you get X, Y, Z if you stream this many hours and I already stream a bunch. So the ads are already there. That would just be an extra 200, 300, 300, $400 for me that I wouldn't have to worry about, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's smart. Yeah, I used to. But they've that. just hinted at it. They haven't. They haven't really announced anything yet, sadly. But um, how did you like? Because obviously, the ad revenue is like abysmal as well, isn't it? The, the split that we get for that is up like just cents oh yeah, it's like penny point, point zero four like, or something. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of you. You would have to just be pure ads to actually get anything out of it. Yeah, but, I think. Um, I think mine. I think it was like last month was like ten dollars, which I was super surprised about. Um, but crazy. it also, what'd you say? It's crazy, isn't it? If you think what you you run three minutes of ads, right? You say yeah. every hour, and yeah. You might stream for five hours. So, oh god, I have to count it in my head: three, six, nine, 12, 15. 15 minutes of ad per stream say possibly more depending how long you go you stream yeah. how many times like five times a week yeah it's about like 90 to 100 hours per month and four times a month and then you got ten dollars for it yeah it's weird it's weird <laughs> it's you would think but uh, what, and, and like what is like amazon i don't know i don't even know how amazon I, works out the, I don't cut, know. the cuts for it one of the one of the Ooh. things that people have been bringing up which i i've actually brought this up on stream a few times is everyone's like oh you remember way back when, when Tim the Tapman and Valkyrie moved to YouTube? And so yeah, did Valkyrie Ludwig. Back now? I don't know. Oh, she's still over YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Um, when people, when that happened, especially when, like, especially when Ludwig moved over, 
people yeah. freaked out on Twitch. Like they were like, "Oh my god, we're gonna we we need to jump ship. Like we need to go. Like Twitch is dying. We need to go to YouTube." And something that I keep bringing up because people have been talking like, "Oh, are you planning to like boost your YouTube in case Twitch dies?" I keep reminding people that like for when you're that big, it's all about the contracts. Yeah. And so like they got paid millions of dollars to stream exclusively on YouTube. They can always yeah. come back to Twitch afterwards once their contract's done. You know, I remember like, watching Ludwig's video explanation and he like the Twitch the contract he was getting with Twitch just just like seemed kind of ridiculous and unfair, it seemed. Yeah. And yeah, and he was a bit sad. He didn't feel like after everything he had done in that year for yeah. the, the 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 company and, and the brand. Yeah, he just they just didn't seem to give a shit about him. So he was yeah. like, all right. Well, if it, it, and that's the thing. If you're going like, to get offered more, like if he gets banned like three times in a row on YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah, the first week. That so was funny. funny. Mm. No, but something that I always bring up because a lot of people was is that, but then also um, people are like, well, YouTube like is better than twitch in regards to revenue and yeah. in my eyes it is if you've already got the platform because if you think about it you have to have a thousand subs to start getting monetization yeah a thousand subs yeah you do and i read you, that i was like oh yeah fuck. and then on I'm top not... of that i think it's forty thousand minutes of watch time um for in a year so you can't even start getting monetized for a year you know, whereas we've all seen on affiliate, if you have connections and you network well and stuff like that, and you, you start off and you're already a part of some communities and you get affiliate right away, you can start getting paid right away instantly. You know, um, I, we, we've seen people get affiliate in a week and they can start making sub money and yeah, bits and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's so much yeah. easier to start making profit on Twitch. Not that it's better. It's just it's not much of a grind. So when people are like, oh, you should jump and start doing YouTube. It's like, I'm going to slowly work on that. Yes. But it's going to take a long freaking time a to get to the point. Subs. A and thousand is, subs. Is the word subscription the same in it's, that? That's, that's somebody paying. No, it's it, that's no, just, can't that's just yeah, for can't subscribing that's to their just channel. To the channel. Yeah, like, which is still YouTube. a lot of people, you know, because um, I, I know a bunch of partners on Twitch who have like 300 people on, in, on their YouTube, you know, yeah, and they're posting shorts a... every single day, you know, yeah. um, I'm it's still, crazy like, around 700 followers and it's been like two years and stuff now. But no, it's, so I can't imagine like suddenly it, have to be like, <laughs> especially and especially because everybody has their own type of content. And yeah. if you hit a niche like perfect, but if not, like if you're making stuff, everyone makes people are going to watch people they like to watch. Like they'll find someone they'll normally keep watching. Um, so it's hard to, it's hard to be like, oh yeah, this is going to work. Um, and I think that a lot of people are like, oh, well. Especially on YouTube, man, when like, they, they so you know, much. they've already, they've got so many awesome video game yeah. creators. And you think like, about the same, the same argument of uh, Twitch doesn't promote you. YouTube doesn't promote you either. The only way people can find you is if, you you get trending or your people are searching for the content that you're putting out yeah because like if i'm if i want to do trophy hunting stuff and i post trophy hunting videos on youtube the only way people are going to find me is if they look up playstation the game that i'm talking about or achievement hunting which is already a niche topic you know <laughs> yeah. so like that's the that's thing like it, it me getting my stuff promoted is going to be very hard um, and it's and that, yes, they both have perks, YouTube and Twitch. But it, I think it, for difficulty on getting big on those platforms, it's about the same amount of work. You know, you just got to work on it. Their lives like quite hard to navigate, isn't it? I've been to a couple live streams. I try to tune into Ludwig's when I can. Um, yeah. It is. I don't like the layout. The UI is really weird. Like. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, it is. But like, it's just the way the chat is, it doesn't look. You know how like when you open a stream, even though the screen is right in the middle, like the chat goes all the way down. Yeah. For YouTube is just a little widget on the side. And that bugs me because I like seeing all of it. And if you if the chat's going, you'll miss everything with with Twitch chat. You can normally there's enough room on the screen where you can see a good amount of messages, even if it's going fast. With Twitch, it's only like 
five or six and you can pull it down more, but it's not as far because then they have all the recommended videos underneath it, you know? And so it's just weird. It just doesn't look like it fits. Like it feels like it feels like you, Twitch is like when you go to someone's channel and they're live, it instantly pulls up their video and then some about stuff underneath and then chat. It feels like YouTube needs to do that as well. Like, yeah, otherwise, it just must, looks like a video you're watching still. It must be hard because they can't for them to kind of, you know, if they say that we they wanted to consider creating a uh, very uh, similar in uh, how it platform in the way Twitch works, if they wanted to yeah. kind of recreate that. But the fact that it's also on YouTube, which also has its own like back end yeah. and how it like, works, they can't like fundamentally just change everything, can they? So yeah, I think it's gonna be a slow process. I think they could do it. Yeah, they're, they're, but it's gonna be a slow process. A couple couple years old, really, isn't it? Like YouTube Live, it feels like it anyway. Well, a few. I think yeah, I think they've been doing lives for three, four years. Yeah, something like that. Twitch yeah. has got a few years, a few years on them. Yeah, but like that's sure. the thing. YouTube's not gonna go away because videos are. It, and I still use YouTube all the time, you know, like what they bring to the internet for like videos and the, all the tutorials they have and how much they store. Oh, like, God, yeah. oh it's, my God, it's, yeah. it has its own benefits and Twitch is like the king of live streaming, especially with how things have been going as of like categories of things that people talk about, like just chatting is like really big. And it always kind of, it always kind of has been, but like uh, I see a lot more people doing like shows, which is cool. Yeah, um, that's really cool. I feel like that's gonna be like it's only gonna grow from there. If I've that always loved sense. the idea of like yeah, turning it into a bit more of a show thing. That would like, yeah, a show with segments that would be awesome. Yeah, I it's really wish YouTube would just stop asking me to join premium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I get some weird ads on YouTube too. I literally looked at a uh, ergonomic chair uh, the other day. Just clicked on one ad, and now all of my YouTube videos are just ads for the oh, man. the Her- I, Herman or whatever. I can't what it's called. I the just get chair. food delivery orders like uh, advertising, and I'm really trying to cut back <laughs> on that stuff. But I'm just getting fed it we, from every angle. We got so accustomed that to because of COVID. Like I, Joy, and I. Yeah so much especially groceries because she has we had we share one car now because my old car like broke down um it was old it was like a 93 so it, it's an antique literally um but we share the one car and she drives so much now because we're trying to move so we can get closer to her job but she drives an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back every day and so she has the car there's no way she can get the car to me um and sometimes when she's like hey like i really don't want to go get groceries but we need groceries it's midweek and when I get home, I just want to like crash. Like, do you mind ordering some groceries? I'll order from like Instacart and we'll get some. And like, it's, it's so much more expensive now than it was yeah. back in COVID oh, that it's yeah. like, and they just increased it without saying anything, you know? And oh my gosh, it's. I guess maybe fewer people were using it. So they were just like, well, well, <laughs> I guess. It's just odd. I mean, I think I I bet it's different um, where you guys are, like because you're in the UK, so just you know, culture and stuff is different and pricing yeah. and all that. But here, at least, like when you look at the prices for items, if you know what the prices are at the restaurant, you can see oh my, such a difference. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. I mean, uh, what I use the most is the delivery, and if you get groceries on that, that the price jack is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah it's, crazy and they make it they make it look similar i i don't they must have a team because like you don't notice unless you're looking you know otherwise it looks fine and then like you you hit the checkout and if if you don't have the subscription you're just like wow this is 60 dollars for like a meal like this that's crazy yeah we try to we try to stay away from those if anything we'll just uh, order delivery from the place we want to go to because then it's normally still cheaper, you know. Cut out that middleman. Yeah. Plus, then you can tip someone who's like working for the restaurant. Because yes, delivery drivers for those apps they still need to get tipped and whatnot. I know tipping tipping is different too because here when you grow <laughs> yeah. up, like we because because the the minimum wage like it's 
it's their way of in, bringing the, the minimum wage down because we're supposed to tip. So it offsets how much of a difference the drop is, you know? So like we're encouraged when we're growing up to tip because it's nice. Plus they're only getting paid some places only like $3 an hour to do like, so crazy. Do, you know? Yeah. And so, because I remember, I forget what it was. I was it's like a con. It feels like, con. It feels like the company's like, con yeah, no, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You all that this is just normal. And yeah, I don't have to pay you anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's <laughs> the thing. Like, so I know some countries, like if you tip, it's insulting. And then there's some that just don't because they don't need to, because they're yeah. already getting paid a full amount. And like, I, and I get that, but like, I've, I've had some people, I remember I was working at, when I was working at Starbucks, someone came through the drive through and like, we have like a tip thing there. And, um, I think the girlfriend was from another country that the guy was going to give a tip to us and she slapped his hand away and said, no, they don't need it. And they drove away. And it was just such a weird thing. Cause I, cause oh. they had an accent, but like when you think about it like there is that difference and i've talked to like people I feel like from the uk America, as well you know about tipping like that's literally like the first one of the first times i ever came over like one of the first ones i like, just you know his member to always keep like a few extra dollars and all of that stuff ready to go to tip mm. essentially essentially it turned out just it would be like say if we we're going out drinking it's like look order a drink just tip a dollar because you're going to then do another drink. So just do a dollar with every drink kind of yeah. thing, you know, if you're, if you're sat at the bar. But yeah, yeah. When the first time I came over, it is a real shock because I'm like, I'm budgeting, I'm planning. Okay, I've got this. I can spend this much for this day, this much this day. But then like, not considering the tip, not considering the tax as well. Like yeah. it's added like onto everything that you buy immediately. It's um, crazy. There's just then, so many um, levels. <laughs> pretty so much many like levels doubling my budget every day. <laughs> it's fucking hell, man. It's hard. Mm. It's very hard. But I, then I'm not going to deny the person working the money. So it's like kind of got everyone by the balls, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's odd. It's very it odd. It doesn't happen here. Yeah, it doesn't happen here. Like, you know, you'll see like a little bit of a service charge added. Always optional. Um, but I'm always happy to do it, especially if the server has been just generally really nice. Um and having no issues i mean i i mean i i really don't like when people complain at restaurants and such my dad used to do it and it just makes me feel used to feel so uncomfortable yeah um um uh, i don't know it might be also just because you know if i've got food in front of me i'm gonna eat it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Even if i think eh, it's not the best meal i've ever had but hey i'm hungry I'm gonna see eat. that that's the i have different. me and joy have like a a rule we both agree that we we tip every single time we go somewhere Unless yeah. we're sitting in in a restaurant that doesn't have a, a a server, like where it's like a buffet where you kind of like serve yourself, so that way yes. you know, like we don't do that. Um, or if we're picking up food ourselves from somewhere, we don't tip because you're just getting the food and leaving. Um, but if we go to a restaurant where it's serve yourself, but there's like a sushi chef over in the side making sushi that you can pick up, we'll tip the sushi guy. You know, because yeah. he's, you know, you know, like there's that kind of rule that we have. But then um, <laughs> and as for like if someone gets our order wrong, if it's something that's completely off from what we had said, like if we asked for a steak and it was we wanted medium rare and it was like, well done, we'll be like, hey, would you mind making us a new steak? But yeah. if it's if it's something that's like, oh, they forgot our thing, uh, our side of fries, we'll just be like, hey, can you grab us a fries? And if they're like, oh, we ran out, I'd be like, oh, cool, whatever, you know? Um, it's, so, it's side of, side of chips, side of chips. Yeah. Side of chips. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the thing, like those types of stuff, like it doesn't matter if it, if it's like, oh, they, uh, yeah. they, they put the mayo on the side when we want it on it. Like, it's like, whatever. But I've seen ah. so many people complain, you know, yeah. like, it's just like, oh, we want the meal for free. Cause you forgot our French fries. <laughs> like you forgot yeah. our chips. What the hell? Like, okay. I just relax. never felt the necessity to be rude or abrasive yeah. but, or like shit happens it doesn't really change you know the color of mustard if i'm angry or if i'm <laughs> quiet about it it doesn't really matter it's just like oh yeah no sorry we're still waiting for that would you is that right yeah great oh thank you so much it's yeah well, why am i gonna be like oh you fucking idiot like i don't gain <laughs> anything from that i if anything i'm gonna feel awful for making someone upset or possibly ruin their day yeah. or knowing who i am and my ego 
I will probably just be staring at the fact that there's someone out there that doesn't like me. Um, yeah, because I was rude to them. People player, <laughs> ple- people pleaser, people player, we um, <laughs> people player. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. And I've, I've worked in a service industry as well. I've been, I've been the kitchen porter. I've been the waiter. I've been the barman. Um, and people are shitty, uh, yeah. especially when they're drunk. Especially when Brit people are drunk and and you're the sober one uh, you're you you have the power and then guys don't like that and if you're they're telling you that that there's no vodka in the drink and i'm telling them i literally just poured it they saw me doing it about it yeah um yeah. well they were trying to try and impress their friends and all that stuff but hey because you're just the barman so I would, yeah, I would never be rude. I've I've had friends that I've like, oh, people I've worked with that I really liked, and then they've gone heavily down in my estimation because they've been so rude to white staff, literally not even acknowledging they're there. And like, I've generally seen someone like use their hand as if like you know like a brush away uh, signal with a hand like on like you know yeah fluttering the back of their hand. Oh God, that that really made me hate that guy. <laughs> So, do you have any uh, do you have any stories of uh, karma moments for for thing or, or any horror stories from uh, your your jobs? Karma moments. Something where like oh someone does like oh hey uh, there was hair in my food and they're like well this is the same color as your red hair like we're not going to give you the free food because this was yours you put it in there and nobody in the staff um, has. Uh, no, I had one. I remember. Uh, uh, I won't be able to say names or anything, but I remember we were on. I was on a photo shoot once in my old job, and there were some celebrities that were a part of the shoot. Mm. Some some were more known than others, and one of the girls that was in this shoot was a singer who wasn't a name I had heard of. No one, not, not many other people in the office had heard the name. They were they were someone who was up and coming on their way, supposed to go to be the next someone, someone else. Yeah. And this person and this team came with a full rider list of stuff that they expected to have in, you know, the makeup room for their for their star, their singer. And we were kind of like, well, no, that's not what we do. We will provide food as part of the shoot and all of that stuff. But you're not going to be getting all of these things. <laughs> and um her team were rude. That's what I find with most people. Like when some celebrities that come with uh, a certain, uh, what's the word? Um, rep, 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 reputation um, of being rude. It's normally their team because yeah. it's their team who are like, look, I'm the big I am. I represent so-and-so. And then you meet the actual so-and-so and they're the loveliest person like ever. You know, it could just be the fact that, you know, they have to be because they're in the public eye or whatnot, but whatever, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, so the team were being rude and awful and she was being difficult and she, they, they demanded to be shot certain ways and, and and like all of this stuff. And, you know, you you don't you don't overly direct the photographer, if you know what I mean. You don't tell them how to shoot you. You yeah. may like say, I look better and in this angle, whatnot, la la la, but you don't tell them like, how they should be doing their job. Yeah pretty much been awful all day and then uh, they were cut out of the entire shoot <laughs> oh <laughs> like when, wow when, like, when the photos were like oh. published and finished they were just not in it whatsoever it it. that to me was very funny <laughs> yeah you know just making everyone like we we're all working like really hard to get the shoot done and they were just making it difficult for no reason and it's just like snip snip <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just gotta do that. I yeah. I don't have anything in regards to like, you know, working with anyone in particular. Um, Sorry, but I was, I was showing off. <laughs> no, you're you're allowed to show off. That's good. Be be proud of what you've done. Um, what is I it? Uh, the the only times that I've ever had like crazy things happen was once at starbucks where we had a lady come through the drive through and she wanted to um she wanted to pay for the guy behind her so the late oh, oh. the person who was uh at the window this is during covid so like the only place they could come through was the drive through 
uh, took her money because they were like, oh, we'll pay for the next person. But we didn't know that the person behind was not in a car. They were walking through the drive through which is here is at least where we have is illegal because it's dangerous. You know, and we're liable for that because they're at our store. <laughs> so when they came up to the window, we were like, sir, we're sorry. We can't serve you because you're not in a vehicle. And um, he was like, all right, cool. No worries. Let me go. My friend should be here soon. I'll just hop in his truck. And we we're like, cool. He was super chill about it. Not a big deal, you know. And so we were just like, we'll keep the money to the side. And when he comes around, we'll pay for his drink, you know? Yeah. Now, the lady who was in front <laughs> saw us <laughs> not serve him and was like, they stole our money. And so they waited in the 20 minute drive through because at the time we were busy as heck because you know how COVID was. Everyone was ordering out. Everyone was going places because, yeah. you know, so we were busier than we'd ever been. And they waited 20 minutes in the drive through to then come up to the window, like half out oh their window God. to just scream. They were calling us slurs and all kinds of things. And just like, you stole from us. You're, you all are so like bleep, 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 like just uh, so mad. Why and didn't you just buy the drink and then hand it to them? You would think, and we told the lady, we were like, ma'am, like, we can't serve someone if they're not in a vehicle. And it's kind of a common known thing that we yeah, want, like, and common sense. Yeah. And so, and we said, he said he was coming back around. We have the money right here. We didn't pocket it. We were waiting for him to come around because he said he'd be back and we know who he is. We're going to be here for another four hours on our shift. We'll know him. <laughs> Um, and so she was just not, and I think, you know, there's that, there's that moment of realization that like, I'm overreacting, but instead yeah. of being like, sorry, I'm going to get more mad because I'm upset with myself now yeah, and I'm embarrassed I've myself. I've made a mistake. I'm embarrassed, yeah. but I'm going to, so yeah, yeah, it just you, got worse and worse. And she called the yeah. cops on us and we had to deal with that. It was the what? stupidest thing. Yeah. It was so dumb. Um, oh my God, humans. but but of course, like we didn't have to do anything because, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, nothing's going to happen. But the only other time that I've actually been able to be like, aha, like you can't play the system um, was when I had my juice bar because I was literally the owner. And so if someone gave me shit, I could literally be like, get out, <laughs> you know, because yeah. there's this common known thing. I don't know if it's as prominent in the UK. I, you'll be able to tell me, but um here there's that whole whole exploited terminology of uh the the customer is always right you know yeah um here it's so bad like a, a company will do its utmost to just deter a situation Bend instead of backwards. yeah instead of just standing their ground and nah, I uh like, i feel like that like, you know i mean i jobs i've worked in that uh public facing they've like they kind of say that but in terms of like the British public, I don't think it really enacts. They enact it. They were probably more likely to call someone a muppet and just be like, "Look, you're being stupid." <laughs> See, here <laughs> no. it's just so pushover. Like it's yeah, because it, it, why deal with it if you can just get them away? You know? Yeah. Um, which is I, it, it's good, but like in some cases, if it's a small business, they can't really give out free food to just deter the situation. You know, they're no. gonna get them to go. And so for me, I lived in a really small town. It was not the best place for a juice bar, which was like an inner city kind of feel. And I was in the backwoods of Pennsylvania. And so we had a lot of people coming in not knowing what I was serving because they're expecting like apple juice, orange juice and smoothies that are chocolate, you know, like not, you know, kale and cucumber, you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so. I had an elderly couple come in and it was like around 4 p.m. It was just like the in-between times that I'd normally get people in. And it was just them. They came in, they ordered smoothies and I was like very, you know, professional as always and made them, the, they got the good berry bliss or something is what I called the, it was just like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries and raspberries mixed together. And, um, I don't use ice because it waters it down. It's just frozen fruit um so that okay. way you get that oh, cool. that cooled um you get the cold feeling but you don't have any watered down effect because you know how if you let a smoothie sit 
about that is obviously some companies use ice as a space filler, right? Exactly. So yeah. But then if you let it sit, it separates and you got that foam shit and then water. It's really gross. Um, yeah. <laughs> mine, I just used uh, like almond milk, uh, banana as a thickener agent, and then the berries. And the berries, the main thing that I put in the smoothies are always frozen in that annex, that cold, you know. Um, and so I served those to them and I was like, here, here you go. Like, you know, and they sat and they were enjoying it. They drank both drinks entirely. And then they got up, put their jackets on and everything as you were going to go. And I said, I hope you have a good day. And the one guy came over and he said, hey, um, that wasn't what we thought it was. Uh, could we get another one? And I was just like, oh, yeah. Like, do you want to try something else? Like, I'm sorry, that wasn't what you thought it would be. But like, I can get you another drink, you know, and they were like, yeah, we'll take that and it'll be to go. I was like, cool, that'll be, and I gave them the price. And they're like, no, well, no, we didn't like the first one. We want this one for free, these two for free. No, you and I was like, you sat there bit. and drank all of them. Yeah. yeah. If you had a problem with them, like I would have I would have gladly probably given you a free one because you were like, oh, you know, you don't like it. Also, I have a big plaque on the front of my thing that if you want to try samples, I'll make them samples. That's something I did. So we, if you want to try, because I knew that people weren't used to that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to try something, I'd gladly make you a little sample cup and you can try it. And I was like, and also we have this here. Like, um, unfortunately, I can't do that because I, you know, I have to pay for the product that I do. And this is all fresh stuff. And um, and they were like, well, I would like to speak to your manager then. And I said, I am the manager. I'm, I'm the owner. <laughs> well, no, I just said, I'm the manager. And they're like, well, yeah. then we want to speak to the owner. And I shit you not, I, it's so petty. <laughs> it's so petty, but it was the proudest moment for me. Oh, I just on. did a 180 and said, hi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hello. And they just like took a moment and they were like, oh, and they just left. And I, was just, I never saw them again, but I was just like. Oh, it was a proud moment and it was super petty, but it was well deserved. Audacity of some people just yeah, I was just like you you sat there for 20 minutes talking and enjoying both smoothies, drank them all, and then you want to get a free like no, that's not how it works. (laughs) It's the uh it's like when people go through the drive-thru and then 20 minutes later they'll come back and be like, This isn't what I wanted, and the cup's empty. And you're just like that. You 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 can disregard that by saying that's not what I wanted. You ordered it. Yeah. You literally looked at a menu and picked it out. Yeah, exactly. It is not our fault that you didn't like it. Exactly. But for (laughs) for what? No, and that and that's the thing. Like most of the corporations that I've worked for, those those will be the times that they're just like give them a new one for free. You know, they're just like do that. You know, because like. Yeah. Why bother? Because they're just gonna hound you on it, you know. Yeah. Like, see, I like ugh. I I used to work in. Uh, I don't know if these shops are in America, but Primark. Like it's a like yeah, I've low heard that. cost low, low cost clothing store. Okay. Not not very environmentally friendly. Lots of fast fashion and plenty gotcha. of it. Um, and I was seventeen when I worked here, and they made me a supervisor. Hmm. Um, of weekend supervisor. Yeah. And. You know, I used to, I used to, part of some days I would have the customer service desk where all the returns are and all of this stuff. And I used to be like that. And, you know, I felt, obviously I was a little bit young. I used to think about it to now. I feel awful because I would come, I would get caught in the tannoy. Josh, can you come down to the blah, blah, blah. And um, almost said my full name there. Luckily I stopped myself. Um, <laughs> and working on the customer service desk uh, like some ladies in you know much older than me of the time the 40s 50s and 60s and stuff who have just been going through this whole thing with the uh, the customer like look no sorry you can't bring it back it's you know it's been worn or it's the tags are not there or it's you know, or it's been soiled or whatever you know or it's underwear you can't bring underwear back of course you can't blah 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 Obviously, for underwear, I wouldn't allow them to ever bring it back. But uh, sometimes, like, I would just come and I'd just be like, oh, I can't be fine to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, just give them the refund. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But then I remember, like, some of the, the ladies would just be like, but, you know, we're not supposed to do that because of this and this and this. I'd be like, I don't care. Like, just get them away. Yeah. It's, it's too <laughs> so, much of a hassle. Yeah, spend an hour to talking to them. Agree. I think now I probably wouldn't. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah. people are ridiculous. <laughs> people are ridiculous. People are ridiculous. That job was ridiculous. They should never have given a 17 year old that position <laughs> I had. I used to, uh, I would train or I would induct, do the induction for new stars on a Saturday morning. Often I'm hungover. I would just, I would spend half the day in the canteen room, you know, go, I had to read the handbook to them basically. But I would just be drinking coffee after coffee after coffee and just like, it would just end up in a free for all of just chatting to everyone and like, oh, you know, what are you up to? Who are you? And, and I remember one guy was just like, I was like, all right, guys, like, we need to stop. We need to read this book. And he was like, you're not going to read it, are you? I was like, nope. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's, let's go upstairs and I'll walk you around the departments and then maybe we'll get you started on some things. Uh, just like, and I was like, I would get paid like, obviously so much for the time and my age at that place and my Saturday shift, half of it would just be me sat down in the canteen having a laugh with all of these new people and then just walk around the shop for like two hours and that would be my day done. <laughs> so I, uh, there was, I, it was out of, after the juice bar and after I finished working at a lumber mill, because when I when I ended the juice uh, bar, I didn't know you did lump. I don't know if you told me about lumber mill before. I've yeah, I've worked a That's lot cool. of jobs. Um, what is it? After the juice bar had closed, I uh, I've said this multiple times, but I didn't know what the fuck I was doing when I opened the juice bar. So when when I eventually ran out of money because location and not knowing how to do anything, um, I had a lease that I had to pay off because I yeah. signed it. And so I had to find a job right away and like work my ass off. And I, the only place that was local that I could do um, that paid really well was uh, the lumber mill. Cause there was a lumber mill near um, the small town that I lived at and they supplied lumber to like all the construction site and like log, log cabin companies and the lodges and stuff in like the East coast. Like they did a lot and they, uh, some of their stuff actually went to the 9-11 memorial in New York as well to build that memorial. Um, wow. It was a big place and it was some of the hardest work that I've ever done in my life. I got shredded yeah, yeah. beyond belief and I was hey. all I did was <laughs> I was literally in the um, grading shed. Uh, first, I started in the mill where you uh, they like saw the, the wood as it comes in um, and then um, I moved to the grading shed, which at the uh, at the the mill, once the 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 boards come down, um, you, they were wet and like because they had to be wet to cut them so they don't be- warp at all. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they're soaked, <laughs> soaked like two by eight boards, <laughs> and you have to run them down the line and put them onto a uh, a, a slate that gets taken off by like a four like a a forklift and um i moved from there to the grading shed which is where they're already dried they're ready to go they get marked with a pen to be put on specific ones you have to know the markings and as they come down on the line you have to run them down and then throw them onto pallets that were stacked with each grade and then those were forklift off to be shipped and so i all i would do is just take lumber and throw them onto pallets and stack them <laughs> for 10 hours a day. And it was just, oh man, it was so, so heavy, like so, he- such heavy work, you know? Um, but then after a while, I started like fucking up my back because it was just yeah, so okay. much. Um, and I had a an injury when I was younger um, where I, I stretched out my vertebrae while I was doing gymnastics. And so when when i i had i've been taking physical therapy for for a while and it was fixed but because of so much extraneous work my, the the vertebrae started to like go back to where it was like the original placement so i was just like i need to find another job because obviously like this isn't good for me long term so i started working at walmart and that is like the staple of like corporate america <laughs> you know yeah. i shit you not the videos on how to like cuz you were talking about the book that you had to read for like work or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The instructional videos for Walmart are the worst put together <laughs> things I have uh-huh. ever watched in my life. I, it's like it's like the room. Like you want to watch it because of how bad it is, but at the same time you're like, oh my god. We would look forward to every single time they would have like a 
the six month back up to like get you prepped and ready for like you know work safety and also like if a, a gun uh a, a, like a, a shooter an active shooter came into the situation of the work like Jeez. they would have like well that's i mean that's america for you but Ugh. um if they had like a seminar for that and they had a video where they vid like they set up like a guy with a gun coming in and they had a whole video example of everything and it's the like the one thing i'll give walmart props for okay the one thing because a lot of the places that i've gone to and worked at they have that that you know talk of like if an active shooter would come in um to just hide hide and call don't don't interact but they it walmart was the only place that i ever worked that when when they said if they find you if they come into the situation they find you fight and that that's the only time because most of the time they're just like play dead or like hide or don't let you know but that's when they're like find a coffee pot grab a broomstick like and i was like that's honestly like you know like it's it's good that they're saying to do that because at the end of the day like you got to protect yourself you know just don't just lay there because that's not going to help you or anybody else in that situation but it was just surprising that they, you know, because normally with that kind of company, they would be like, don't, that's a lawsuit, you know, like it happened at their work, workplace, you know. But yeah, scary. That's really scary, isn't it? Life is crazy. But now, you know, instead of Walmart and uh, Lumber Mill and the juice bar and stuff, we're um, <laughs> streaming, 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 streaming. Now, like streaming. But like, how long have you been full time now? It's been quite a while, right? It's been a year and uh, uh, almost two months. Year and almost. Dude, two that's months. so impressive. It's that's weird so to cool. think about. I'm yeah. I'm just proud that um I was a I'm I still able to do it. Like obviously, you know, financially it's not the best. Um, and I have my wife to thank for that. Joy has been such a absolute joy, joy. <laughs> um it's to give me the availability to do something like this and i'm very humbled yeah. by the fact because obviously not a lot of people have the opportunity to do something like this but absolute um, star yeah and i'm really happy for her because her new job is what she went to school for and she's happy with it and it's her dream job I so school for. <laughs> so she's actually getting to do what she uh she wants to do so it's it's good it's good oh legend yeah. well done joy yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but chips, I, I really I really appreciate you coming on and talking with oh, me. This thanks was, for having me, man. Yeah, this has been super fun. Um, as always, I give a section. This is the time to plug yourself non sexually. Uh tell us about yourself and what you're doing, where to find you, <laughs> what you got going on. <laughs> well, yeah, first I would like to say to you, mate, well fucking done. You've been smashing this whole Twitch thing, not only just on Twitch itself, but you know, expanding in the ways that you have this uh podcast, obviously the fact you're doing Patreon now. So and you're always so switched on and kind and then like organized in a way that just blows me away because I am the polar opposite. And it's all very, very impressive. And yeah, and just say so you've absolutely, absolutely been smashing this. And it's a pleasure to be your friend and colleague of sorts. <laughs> I, I, that means the world, honestly. And I, I've said this uh, before on your stream, and uh, I'm going to say it again now. Um, you're awfully hard on yourself when you're someone who I personally look up to a lot. Um, we might be polar opposites, but I, uh, I, I, I think that you're a wonderful human being. And your streams are one of the best that I like to watch. Um, and there's a reason why you were the first. <laughs> and there's a reason why I still watch. <laughs> and then I'll be the last. And, um, <laughs> and I will be the last. I will be the last. <laughs> but no, everyone's seriously. gone to YouTube, I'll be the last one still streaming every now and again. <laughs> you become the face of Twitch. It's just sad and chips on Twitch. Just <laughs> Uh, yeah what do you got going on where, where can um, we find you yeah so yeah i i am uh side of chips which is uh twitch.tv slash uh side underscore of underscore chips uh pretty much the same for all socials um but i only really have twitter and um i guess i got rid of instagram recently i think maybe the account is still there but i just i don't have the app so i don't really use it yeah. uh youtube also the same i 
again is absolutely like i haven't uploaded on it since like october or something uh i i, I promise at some point maybe i will uh, <laughs> that's a real solid promise there uh i'm a variety streamer um all sorts of uh silly little games um and i just yeah just i try to have a little i've got a really lovely community that's the thing i'm really really like kind of proud that um somehow i've managed to manifest um just because they are so kind and lovely and fun and kind of equally ridiculous people so, as like i i can be um and we have a fun little discord we've even got a channel that's called first traps uh if you're kind of into that thing <laughs> where we just fawn over and talk about all manner of male and female and all genders in between <laughs> um i don't know why i'm just using that as a sellout point maybe we won't use that uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey you know it works yeah. Yeah. Remember um, remember the whole thing was the beginning was me. I was I was making apple juice with my ass. And yeah. it still gets <laughs> talked about. Why? Who knows? I don't even know where it got started, but it's still it's still prevalent. Yeah. <laughs> well if you if you do come to watch me if you're not already expect uh a forgetful little British guy from the southwest who sounds a bit like a hobbit at times. Um who sometimes bursts into song and makes a fool of himself bit of a boomer energy and the, the things that you young folk know that i just have no idea what they are so lots of fun <laughs> there lots of potatoes and, uh, a lot of potatoes an entire mod team that just like to tear into me that every opportunity <laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> wonderful <laughs> seriously uh thank you so much for being no, on you, and Appreciate uh it. anyone who uh, i'm gonna plug myself a little bit if you if you haven't already check out the the patreon um, you get the episodes early before everyone else. So you can listen to the podcast. You can support the podcast. Also, there's bonus episodes, which we're about to go record, where we talk a little bit more about topics that we have been talking about. And uh, it's a little bit more laid back. We can answer your questions. And speaking of questions, if you have any that you would like me to answer, um, give it about streaming, the podcast, my life, whatever, open book. Feel free to tweet at me or message me directly with any questions you might have. And we'll do a little segment on the podcast where we answer those. So, so if you have a question, you want to be on, ask away. <laughs> but Chips, also, thank you so much. What was it? Quickly, so Yeah, I'm a video editor as well. So I don't know if any streamers or YouTubers, anybody wants like little things edited, hit me up because I want to edit more like content that I like and not just a bunch of fashion crap. So yeah, fair. <laughs> Gaming. Understandable. Hit me up. Yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> and we'll have all his information down below. So if you want to check him out and you want to take him up on that, you know down below check that out um but thank you chips uh everybody Thanks, eat your apples and stay funky my dudes bye, bye.